call to order the Shelton City Council meeting for August 7th, 2018. I welcome anybody, everybody. Uh, rise for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. First on the agenda tonight is swearing in of several new Shelton police officers. Chief Moody. Stand right up there, front center. So, it's a great day. So, not only do I get to swear in one, the mayor gets to swear in three new Shelton police officers. Um, they're all lateral police officers that came to us from other agencies. Um, they all took a different route to get the Shelton that they got here. Um, Michael DeRoche um, spent some time as an officer in one of the bigger cities down in um, the greater Seattle area, was here at Skokomish Reservation for a while as an officer, and he started this week with us. Matt Gray, some of you may say he's familiar, he's used to wearing tan uniform, um, spent 12 years with the Mason County Sheriff's Office, saw the error in his ways, and decided <laughs> to come over to the Shelton Police Department. Um, and Jordan Marine also took a different route. Um, he worked for a tribal agency, then went to work in New Mexico and decided the tumbleweeds were a bit much for him and he was coming back to the Northwest and we're lucky to have him. He's been a provisional officer with us for the last several months. Provisional means they work for an hourly pay with no benefits. Um, but with the retirements and things that have come up, we've had these opportunities to hire these wonderful folks. And now we have some some stability going on at the police department, some new change. We just finished a sergeant's exam. We'll have three new supervisors coming on board. So there's a lot of really fun things happening at the police department and good folks coming on board. So Mayor, if you'd like to, I'd like you to come up and swear them in. And if you want to take pictures from family and friends, you're welcome to come up here and stand up here and take pictures. And this is uh, one of the elected officials' honors to do this kind of duties as a sign. I'm glad to do so. Gentlemen, if you raise your right hand, please. Um, repeat after me. I state my name. Do solemnly swear. I am Master Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Washington. And the Constitution of the State of Washington. And abide by the Code of Ethics of the Shelton Police Department. And abide by the Code of Ethics of the Shelton Police Department. And that I will faithfully and impartially and I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of a police officer for the city of Shelton. Discharge the duties of a police officer for the city of Shelton. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mayor Commissioner, thanks for uh, listening. So uh, the chief had me talk a little bit about some of the stuff our officers do on a daily basis. I was just up at a block watch party talking about how it's, the chief and I have it really easy. We get to sit in the air conditioned office, push paper, et cetera, but it's the men and women that do the job every day in and out that give us the credit that we do uh, for this great police department. So just, just prior to us going to this block watch party, our officers were dispatched to the Mountain View area for a, a welfare check. Um, uh, strange spouse called and said, hey, I was worried, I'm worried about her. Um, I think she might be suicidal. So our officers found her, and she was actually in the act of hanging herself. Um, she was standing mm -hmm. on a chair with uh, a rope around her neck and a rope across uh, a high beam. Uh, our officers, just recently, we just had our, our crisis intervention training and our uh, de-escalation training. Um, tried conversing with her, trying to talk to her. Um, ultimately, she took a step forward and began to hang. Uh, our officer ran over there, picked her up, and held her for about three minutes until his backup could get there and could cut the rope and cut the rope from her throat. So um, she's alive and well, 
and we can credit that life-saving to our officers. So that's just, you know, this is the stuff they do day in and day out, and I just don't get the opportunity to share with that with the commission and the mayor those stories, but I just want to make sure you know that um, you've got wonderful officers working for you in a community that supports you guys 100%. So thank you very much. What Mike didn't say is one of those officers was Mr. DeRose. Hmm. On his third day. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. May I say something? You may, Council. Okay. Every time that I see the swearing in of the police officers, which has been several times since I've had uh, sat on the council uh, commissioner's seat and now the council seat, um, I get goosebumps. Um, we live at the end of the street, and I hear the sirens and the cars speeding out all the time, knowing that they're going to um, help somebody save their life. Um, and so it, I get kind of emotional when I think these men are out there, um, and they have families. They're out putting their life on the line for other people. And um, just want to say thank you. Thank you. I'll well said, Council there. Member. Um, I forgot to change our agenda as the first thing. So with the uh, sympathy of the, the Council, I'd like to move uh, action item uh, about the surplus vehicles. Uh, up to immediately, so Chief Moody can get on his way. Is there any objection, objection to that? Mm -mm. Nope. All right, Chief Moody, you're up, please. Thank you. I have another neighborhood watch party that they've invited us to, and I told them I would get there as soon as I could after we got this taken care of. I appreciate you moving this up. This is just a, a council update and action item. Uh, we discussed surplusing two vehicles that essentially have little or no value to the police department of the city at this point. Um, I would ask that the council go ahead and move forward with the surplus on that. And any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Okay. Any, just any public comment? No public comment. Okay. Just a quick question. So I saw the no value, no value. Well, there's got to be a little bit of value in those. There's a certain, well, it's a certain dollar level amount. Usually we say if it's $500 or less. And a lot of these cars, by the time they get to this point, I mean, one of them is a 2006 Crown Victoria with a few hundred thousand miles on it, and as it's been road hard as a police car, its value is pretty limited. Just thought I'd ask. In you fact, one of them is a parts car that we've been stripping parts off of to prepare the other cars out here. Yeah, there's a little value in that. That's all right. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions for Chief Moody? Okay. Uh, any motion? I'll, Do we need to read it? Right. Yeah, read. Oh, wait. Uh, comments on an action item. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, there was nothing. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, resolution one one two zero zero four one eight. Resolution number one one two zero dash zero four one eight. A resolution of the city of Shelton, Washington, declaring city vehicles a surplus to the needs of the city and disposing of such vehicles for the common benefit. Thank you, Donna. Now. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt resolution number 1120-0418, a resolution of the City of Shelton, Washington, declaring a city vehicle surplus to the needs of the city. Second. Okay, there's a motion to uh, accept resolution number 1120-0418. Uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution accepted. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Bye, Chief. Have, have fun. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next on our list, uh, Dwayne Wilson from the Kiwanis Town Quis Kiwanis Christmas, Christmas Town, Town Kiwanis, Kiwanis Club is here to give a report. And thank you, Dwayne, for uh, waiting. No problem. Thank you, uh, Mayor and uh, Commissioners. We, uh, Christmas Town Kiwanis uh, does uh, bluegrass in the forest every year. It started as a fundraiser to build a restroom at Callanan Park. And it took us three years to get that done, but we got it done. And then now we raise funds for uh, community projects. And I've given you all a program, and as you go through it, you can just look through it. it talks about the bands, talks about the history, what I just mentioned. Um, shows some of the things we do, some of the events we do, band scrambles and uh, mandolin tasting. Uh, it, I guess um, basically that's what we do. And we, we bring in folks, probably we get more from Oregon than we get from Mason, believe it or not. And, uh, 
we're charged when we get funds from the uh, hotel motel tax. We're charged with bringing people to Mason County, and, and that's what we do. So as you go through, it talks a little bit about Christmastown, Kiwanis, things we do. And then uh, the last page, last two pages are things to do in Mason County. That, and this was Rachel Hansen's idea. She did this program for us. And uh, it, the last two pages, so all these visitors we bring in, this is things you can do in Mason County besides watch bluegrass. And, and we do, um, if you look at the report, did we get those out? Yep, mm -hmm. OK. Um, we, we requested $7,000. We turned in receipts for uh, 7900 And then there was one more that was late arriving, another uh, $900. So it's close to $8,800 that we put in marketing, strictly marketing. And uh, we, uh, we do that in a lot of ways. The journal here, but in uh, a lot of uh, marketing, a lot of now, Facebook types, those kind of things. But then the Tacoma News Tribune, uh, Bremerton Sun, Longview Daily News, Aberdeen Daily World, those are all places we put ads. And we draw people from all of those. If you look through the report, uh, we estimated we brought in about almost 2,100 folks uh, total. Um, uh, <laughs> the hotel motel tax folks want to know how many people come, come total, how many come from more than 50 miles, how many are local, and that's all listed in here. So we had 550 that came from 50 miles or more. Uh, we had, uh, well, um, paid lodging nights. We had 139 at, uh, these, these are individual rooms at the Shelton Inn, 50 at the Super 8, um, two at the Shelton City Center, Little Creek Casino had 21, Sunrise uh, Motel Hoodsport had two, the Bend and Union, the Hilton Garden Inn and Ole, which, you know, we're not charged with making them money, but there were no rooms here. And it's not just us, the, uh, the racetrack has a little to do with that also, but there's no rooms on that weekend in Shelton and, and in the area. And so then uh, as you look on, we go, we track how many people, where they come from, you'll see all those zip codes. And uh, we ask these folks for this as they come in, plus I get them off of PayPal, plus we get them when we register our campers. And we had 110, or something like that. Yeah, 110 so. campers with two to three people in each camp staying up at the high school. And they're all, almost all of them are from out of town. We get a few from Olympia, uh, Shelton, but not many. Most of them are from out of town. And they stay up there two nights, Friday, Saturday, play music. <laughs> you go up there four in the morning, they're jamming out there. So it's a lot of fun. So th that'll give the information how many came uh, from Oregon. And we had them come from uh, Vancouver, BC, San Francisco, California, Idaho, Boulder, Cal Colorado, Sacramento. Lockwood, Montana, and a couple from Hawaii. So that's just okay. a quick overview. Mark told me to keep it short. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping it short. So okay. any questions? If you like good acoustic music, it's, it's a great event. Uh, I, I was talking to Abe Gardner out here. There's a violin player on the second page there. She was supposed to be here two years ago. She ended up touring with the Rob... Uh, a Rod Stewart band for two years, she couldn't come to Shelton. So oh, that's darn. the quality of musicians that we're bringing, and it's not just me and my cousins up there. It's uh, <laughs> good players. So, any questions? Any, any questions for Dwayne? It's a great event, Dwayne. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for all you do for this community, oh, Dwayne, for the, bet. what, 30 or 40 years, right? <laughs> At least. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up, Abe Gardner talking about a letter of support from the city of Shelton. Hi. Good evening. Um, so, I, uh, my name is Abe Gardner. I work for Mesa County Public Health. Um, and uh, I'm here uh, asking for uh, not just a signature uh, on a piece of paper, but uh, uh, support and, and participation in a program where we're, um, we're, we have the opportunity to be a part of here in Mason County. To give you a quick little backstory, um, we were approached by the uh, Washington State Department of Health back in uh, early 2017 uh, with some funding to do some overdose outreach uh, prevention education. And um, we gladly accepted at the health department. That's what I was hired on initially. Um, we thought that was just going to be a few month project. We thought the money was only for a short duration of time. So we uh, applied for some federal funding. Um, and I actually was in front of, uh, we got a letter of support from the city at that point in time. 
uh, to request that funding from the Department of Justice, uh, which we received. And uh, so a few months after that, we, we found out that we, uh, the state funding continued. So we, we have that funding, but we were also awarded the Department of Justice funding for uh, a different program. And that's why I'm here today. Um, that program is a little bit different than the uh, state funded program. State funded program is more specific on overdose and uh, the uh, uh, response to overdose. Uh, the project I'm here about is called the Comprehensive Opioid Abuse Program. And um, the Department of Justice is, is allowing us to kind of tailor um, our program to our community's needs. Um, and we thought it would uh, be best to look at our treatment and recovery system as a whole. Um, and, um, and asking uh, folks from different uh, stakeholder groups, uh, so first responders, our therapeutic courts, our tribal nations, our uh, county officials, our city officials, um, asking for everybody to sit at the table and talk about solutions um, as a community. Um, and so that's what we're doing. Um, we have our first uh, uh, official uh, COPE stakeholder group meeting in September. Um, and um, you know, at the very least, it'd be fantastic to have a, a signature from the city uh, saying, we, yes, we support this program, but it would be even better to have a representative or more than one representative from the council to participate in that stakeholder group. Um, and so that's just kind of in a nutshell. Be more than happy to answer any questions or clarify anything. Um, questions for Abe? Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I think the city will be more than happy to sign a letter of support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need a motion for that? Do we need a vote for that? Or? Um, I think that you should have the um, council vote to have a representative of the council sign the letter of okay. support. So everyone's read a letter of support. Uh, do we have a motion to have the city representative sign that? So moved. Second. Um, well, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mickey. I will bring up that I think that the committee that he was speaking of, um, that you and Eric did attend a meeting. That, that the no, that's a different one. Oh, it's it is. Parker. Oh, I think it's, I, I think it's the same one that Gabe's talking about, but we'll bring that we'll, back we'll next We'll time. clarify that. Yes. Okay. We'll bring that back next uh, next meeting. Okay. Okay, time for um, council member reports. We'll start with council member Dorsey, please. All right. Well, I had a pretty soft week or two, but... Um, well, kind of. We had those city manager uh, <laughs> interviews, and that was two days of grueling interviews. Um, I had a fun thing, breakfast in the park. I think a lot of us went down there. I go there every year, support them best I can. Um, and then I had a few uh, briefings with uh, Vicki on the 2nd and the 6th. So that's about it for me. Thank you. Council Member Anisco. For two full days of city manager interviews. Um, obviously today I have a Lions Club meeting tomorrow. And then I have a housing coalition meeting on the 14th. And I also attended the Panakees of the Park. That's it. All right. Council Member Kranz. Yeah, also with the city manager interviews, I did have a, uh, I took a vacation. And, and then I got back and had more staff uh, briefings when I got back, so. Okay, thanks, sir. Uh, besides the briefings and the interviews this week, uh, Council Member Anisco and I met with Commissioner Ke Kevin Schutte and Todd Parker to discuss uh, participation in the county housing, let me get this right, housing and behavioral health advisory board and Council Member Anisco will be our official rep and I will be the alternate. Um, I went, met with Donna veteran with the uh, Timberland Library and just kind of went over the Shelton Library and some issues that she wanted to discuss and had a good day with her or a good couple hours with her. And uh, also Chief Moody, who's not here, uh, I attended a meeting, Chief Moody was invited and I kind of invited myself to a neighborhood meeting around Brewer Park and community 
lifeline and some issues around the neighborhood there and uh, that group will probably meet again here in two or three weeks. Um, the week coming, um, I will be attending a luncheon hosted by Peninsula Credit Union, which I believe a couple other council members are attending. Um, Jim Morrell has uh, kind of had a um, exchange with uh, credit unions in Africa and two representatives from Kenya will be there for lunch. And he invited the, some of the council members and the mayor to be there. And I appreciate that. So that's my report. Okay, wonderful. Deputy Mayor. In addition to, of course, the city briefings and interviews, I've reached out to the regional transportation, um, it's actually Peninsula Regional Transportation Planning Organization that I've been appointed to as a representative of the city to clarify their schedule. Seems like we've have some conflicting reports, so I'll make sure that I'm there to represent the city in that. Um, also had a meeting with Jennifer Barry at the Economic Development Council. Um, and as Mayor Rogers mentioned, I'll be attending the luncheon next week with Peninsula Credit Union. Um, I'd also like to extend my gratitude to Gordon Weeks and the Mason County Journal for um, asking the newly appointed council members to respond about how things are going here. I think we're all really excited that this is a new chapter for the city and appreciate the opportunity to um, dialogue with you on that. Thank you, Council Member McDowell. Um, last week I had my uh, Department of Health board meeting. The 25th, I was invited to sit in on a um, University of Wa excuse me, Western Washington University feasibility study. Uh, they're kind of looking in this area for maybe extending some of their campus down this way. So, anyway, it was very interesting some of the ideas that came up with that meeting. Um, I had my briefings, uh, interviews last week, briefing this week. I had my left board meeting this morning. I have my Lion Club meeting tomorrow. More briefings, and then I'm out of here for two weeks. Okay, thank you. Council Member Schmidt. Who authorizes that? <laughs> you do. Okay. Can I go? Uh, in addition to the city manager interviews last week, um, this week coming up, um, have the uh, EDC board meeting on Thursday morning at uh, Sierra Pacific Industries, the mill downtown, should be interesting. Uh, Mazecom board meeting next Tuesday, and as well the uh, credit union exchange on Friday the 17th. That is all. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, um, we we'll now have time for general public comment. So we allow three minutes for public to comment on anything that you'd like to comment on, hopefully regarding the city. So. Um, Don, do we have anything? Anybody signed up? Yes, Don Ben. Okay. Spell J O H N or J O N? Your name? J O H N. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. My name is John Sam. I'm a staff accountant for the city of Shelton. Um, I provided each of you with a letter of resignation. It's with great disappointment I'm providing you with this letter of resignation. I followed the city's policies to the letter. And over the course of the last two years, I've been able to learn my job, become proficient at it, and make several process improvements. The process improvements have allocated more time for me to perform the aspects of my job that have never done, been done before by any of my predecessors. When I first came on board with the city, it was a very steep learning curve uh, that four or five people before me were unable to master. The environment under Kathy Byerly and Thomas Donnelly was a difficult one to deal with, but they listened and they were fair. I quickly learned my job and was able to uh, take on additional duties of processing all grant billings for the city. I was able to dig into business licensing and B&O taxes and either bring businesses into compliance or recommend revocation of their licenses. These two aspects of my job took me two years to complete. I cleaned up problems that were never resolved by the accounts receivable accountants in the past, which caused me to go back eight or nine years. Late 2017 or early 2018, a new manager was hired for finance, Terry Schnitzer. Uh, it was rumored that Craig Gregory was the key person in her hiring process. Terry had no leadership experience, actual or displayed when working with finance team members. I've tried to make constructive suggestions, ask her about procedural issues, or express a problem within the work environment, and she's repeatedly raised her voice to me, scowled at me, 
publicly admonished me in front of my coworkers. John? Yes. I, I'm going to ask to not use personal references. If you want to reference the city, that would be fine. Um, Stating facts is not allowed. I, no, I want you to state facts. Please don't use personal references. Um, you can say city staff or however you'd like to word it, but I, I please refrain from personal references. Okay. I, I got a copy of my letter then. I'm fine um, with you stating facts. Just and the use long city and staff. short of it is that I filed an HR complaint. It was met with a letter of reprimand, and that's direct retaliation. You've got some serious problems within your managerial structure, and I hope you guys can look at qualifications of your managers, mostly your administrators, and uh, hopefully get some things resolved so it's a good work environment again. Uh, on one final note, uh, there has been a lot of talk and rumors about uh, basically putting Ryan Wheaton and Nola Von Newdeg in a negative light. Nola was an outstanding leader. She was here for a very short period of time. She transformed the finance team, made it a happy work environment, and converted the city from accrual to cash accounting in less, less than a year. That's a lot of work to do in that amount of time, so I'd be worried of who you're listening to. Thank you. Thank you, John. Evening, Tom. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Council members, and uh, now for something completely different and hopefully uh, upbeat. Uh, my name is Tom Davis. There's folks who, who don't know me, and I'm involved in uh, with Ponza. Ponza is the administrator of Coyote Village, and as you know, we're um, we're uh, attempting to uh, build a 30-unit uh, tiny home village here in Shelton. Uh, at a site that we're aware of here uh, <coughs> that's city-owned and uh, to house uh, veterans here in Mason County who are homeless. Uh, the count of uh, homeless veterans, incidentally, I've just learned is up to 50, and that's uh, for the county count of homeless veterans for that particular population. I never doubted that there was going to be a, a, a not enough veterans to fill the 30 homes, but now it's at least uh, an official count and, uh, and it seems to be growing. So there's a, there's a need, and I'd like very much to put that particular issue to bed, whether or not there's a need for it. There most definitely is a need for this particular project. Uh, I also um, went ahead and sent you, uh, this is a little bit different cover, but sent you all this information, the information packet. Uh, and the information packet is everything that we have on Coyote Village, more or less, with the, uh, with the leases that uh, were negotiated uh, for both Ording and, uh, and Thurston County. And the reason I had all this inclusive information put in there and requested is because we don't have a conceptual drawing to give you because it's tied up with uh, our, our receiving the money. Uh, we can't get a conceptual uh, and an engineer's drawing uh, and, and spend $150,000 or so on until we have control of the property. And I understand that there are legitimate concerns about uh, what this particular project is going to look like, and we'd like nothing better than to give you the documentation so you have a visual on exactly that. But we have something better, and that's what we've, we're, we have a model that's already existing and that's successful that you can visit at any time, and some of you already, already have. Uh, but until we have control of the property, we would not be able, Commerce will not uh, uh, allocate the funds that for, um, for the project. On, on any level, and that's unfortunate. So we're a little caught between a rock and a hard place here. Um, so it is a, a bit of a leap of faith. So uh, with that in mind, what, what uh, I thought would be a good idea and respectful to, to you, the council members and your questions is I would bring some uh, people in. I asked uh, Sean McGrady, the executive director of Panza, to ask some of the uh, distinguished uh, uh, members of that particular council, uh, board of directors, to come and speak to you. Now, they can't talk to you about site-specific questions because we haven't got a site, and those questions will be specific to that site. 
So we can, we can only be very general. In any case, I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves. Hopefully they won't take up as much time as I did. And, uh, and, I, and I hope it will be beneficial to everyone here. Thank you very much. Hi, Mike. Hi. Good to see you again, Mayor, City Council. Um, my name is Mike Warjohn. I am on the board of Ponza, uh, soon to become Coyote Communities, because we're hoping to build many more. Um, but I'm also the director of Port Blakely Tree Farms, and we manage around about 25,000 acres here around Shelton. And I want to, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but one 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 story that I'd like to share is um, about. Three years ago, I got a call from the DNR that we'd had smoke reported on our property. And being the guy that's responsible for this area, uh, it was my job to go investigate that. And uh, it was right out on Arcadia, on an on 80-acre a parcel that we own. We have a lot of urban interface. And sure enough, there was a campsite. And this is something that's becoming more and more common. Uh, it used to be all the smoke was people picking wild mountain blackberries and smoking cigarettes. and. And uh, that's not the case anymore. Now we have a lot of residents on our property. And uh, this particular guy was named Tim. And I talked to Tim for a while and told him he needed to put his fire out. And he could, he could camp there, but he just couldn't have a fire. And uh, he was uh, perfectly OK with that. But I asked him, I said, what are you doing here? Why, why are you here, of all places? You know, and you have services in town. You can... And his answer was, uh, I don't feel safe in sleeping in the city of Shelton, like downtown. You know, out here, nobody bothers me. I can go catch the bus. I can go to Olympia. I can go into town. Um, but uh, he didn't feel safe sleeping in the, in the town. So fast forward a year, I get involved with Ponza in Coyote, uh, Coyote Village and started talking to the residents of Coyote Village. And, and you ask the residents of the village, what do you like about this, this new home that you are now occupy in this Coyote Village? Every time you ask that question, the number one answer is, I finally feel safe. Now that I live here, I feel like I can, I can sleep at night. I don't worry about people taking my stuff. I don't worry about being attacked. The, the, um, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of abuse that happens on the street. And once they get in that house, they feel safe, and then they can begin to address the other things in their life. And so these two sort of um, pathways for me to get involved in Shelton, um, I think it's important, and I think our company, Port Blakely, would be happy to really put some skin in, <clears throat> skin in the game if we can get you know the, the community to, to work with us on that, because this problem is affecting us, and, and uh, we don't need any more campfires out there. Believe me, it's getting to be a little bit, a little bit of an issue. So I'll leave it at that. I'll let the rest of the folks talk about some of the other issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Joe Shorn. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and members of the Council. Thank you. My name is Joe Shorin. I am I'm Vice President for Operations of the Board of Ponza. Um, Ponza is a nonprofit corporation, and um, it's a very intentional organization. And I just wanted to share um, a few words with you to convey to you all sort of who, uh, if you are in conversation, and I know that you are, um, with Ponza uh, about uh, the possibility of a, or a uh, Shelton Veterans Village, um, a little bit about our organization. Um, we believe that um, the model that we have at Quixote Village, uh, community supported uh, permanent housing, is a model that would work very well to serving our homeless veterans. Um, I want to assure you that we um, are fully committed to the success of a veterans village here in Shelton. And, um, but to convey to you that good intentions alone aren't enough and that our organization is um, supported by a very hardworking, solid um, board of directors. I mean, we have a great staff. Um, our executive director is here. We have um, a, a program manager and resident advocate at our existing village and intend to at other villages. Um, but organizationally, Ponza as a nonprofit is governed by a board. Um, and our board, uh, we have a, a dedicated board of 12 members. Um, and it is a working board 
that is fully committed to the success um, of uh, this village and of all the other um, villages that we, uh, well, the Ording Village that we are currently working on, as well as um, Camp Quixote, which, um, which we're currently operating. Personally, I'm a lawyer um, in my day job. That may work for me or against me, I don't know. Um, but um, our board is comprised of uh, a number of professionals, people that bring um, diverse um, experiences and background to the work that we do. Um, we think that we have an opportunity to build a very strong partnership with the city, and I just wanted to convey to you that we are fully committed to ensuring that that is successful, and we will, as we move forward, would expect to listen to you to understand fully what the city's needs are to ensure that this undertaking works for everybody. Um, I, I will say that when I first joined the board of Ponza, one of the things that the board does um, at Quixote Village is that we, um, uh, on a monthly basis, we get together with the residents so that we're connected. Um, and uh, we have a resident dinner, and it became very quickly uh, apparent to me uh, how transformational the operation of this village has been for those residents. So I hope we can bring that model here as well. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. <clears throat> Evening, Laura. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. I am uh, pleased to be able to speak here tonight. I am Laura Watson, and I am actually one of the newest board members of Ponza. And what I can say attracted me to the organization was um, the humane, what a humane and elegant solution it was to build tiny home villages as a response to the persistent problem of homelessness. What really has affected me is the sense of pride, the sense of community that I've been exposed to just through getting to know the Coyote Village residents. And it really translates into um, what struck me as the beauty of the Coyote Village, the grounds, or from each carefully decorated cottage, uh, the community gardens, the tidiness, the cleanliness, the pride that they bring uh, to the land and to each of their homes. I am very excited about the possibility of joining this board at a time when we're hoping to expand our model to help more people, especially to help people who have done so much for us and have done so much for our country. I'm super proud to be a part of this. Hope we get to partner with you and appreciate the opportunity to, to make my remarks. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Laura. Thank you. Hi. Evening, Amanda. Uh, thanks for having us here. I really appreciate it. This is not my arena. So um, I am the resident advocate at Coyote Village. Um, I provide case management to the residents who live there and get to see firsthand the way that the village can affect folks in our community. Um, we, um, we see some really amazing things at the village. Some of our board members have spoken to that, and I could go on all day about it, but I only have three minutes. so. Um, I really just want to uh, say that as a social worker, I've worked in a lot of different environments with a lot of different models through government entities and nonprofits. Um, and for me, this model is one of the best examples that I've seen to long-term change for people that I work with. Um, so I've really seen that within the village model. I think that comes through um, the consistency that we can provide for people and the long-term support. Um, my job entails mostly providing navigation of resources for folks and helping them achieve those long-term goals. So once they've moved out of survival mode, then I can step in and help them get to where they want to be, whether that's engaging with treatment or uh, going back to school or finding a primary care provider. I can wear a lot of different hats, but um, at the end of the day, I'm helping with uh, folks reaching their goals. Um, I'm also a resident of Mason County. So I wanna speak as a, a resident of Shelton who really um, sees this as a creative solution um, that's sustainable for our growing county. And I want to really encourage that we take a serious look at this as a solution for, for our neighbors and community members. Thanks. Thank you, Amanda.
Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. Uh, I will be from the way I'm dressed, you can probably guess what I do for a living. I, I too, am a lawyer, along with Mr. Shorn. Um, uh, but I'm also a veteran. I spent uh, 31 years in the United States Army, uh, most of that as a lawyer for the Army. Uh, but now I serve uh, in Thurston County in the prosecutor's office. And one of the thing, one of my duties there is I am the prosecutor for the Veterans Court in Thurston County. And uh, I took on that role because uh, being a veteran, you have a unique perspective on veterans. And one of the things that has uh, struck me in that work is that homelessness and um, uh, mil uh, criminal problems or you know, issues with the law, um, sometimes drug use, uh, which is sometimes co-occurring, and mental illness all, all come together uh, in, in, the, in our therapeutic courts. Mason County, I know, has therapeutic courts, and one of those is, a, I don't think they have a veterans court, but I know they have a mental health court here. We, um, I, I was drawn to the Panza board because of that work I've done with the veterans court. One of the things that about veterans, we, ha we don't have, uh, Coyote Village is not all veterans. There are non-veterans at Coyote Village, but both Warding and here in Shelton, we're focusing on vet a veteran population. And one thing about veterans is that everyone who, if, if anybody here is in the military, you can probably attest to this, that everyone who goes in the military has at least in some time in their past, some training and discipline, some training that gives them a foundation for their lives. And sometimes they lose their way, but that foundation is always there. And I think that uh, in my experience in Veterans Court that that foundation gets built on by the services that the court provides, by the services that, the, that are provided to them by the VA. One of those services, sometimes that service is housing, sometimes it's not. But it is a absolutely critical foundation for, uh, to get people back on their feet and moving forward again. But the benefit that to, of that, of that uh, discipline is that the folks that you're going to be coming into, into the village here at Shelton will have that foundation. And they will be, uh, at least um, as they start out, they will have a foundation unlike you hear, you hear about things going on in Seattle with tiny house villages and whatnot, where they're taking people off the street who are just folks who don't have any of that foundation. I think that you'll find that the, the target population that we are looking at will be will quickly turn into a gem of the community. And I hope you'll allow us to move forward with this project. Thank you. Thank you. Our last comment is Tim Ransom. Good evening. Good evening, Thank Tim. Thank you for uh, allowing us to speak with you tonight. My name is Tim Ransom. And I'm also a member of the Pond, Board of Ponza. In fact, I'm the grand old man of the Board of Ponza. Uh, I, I have the great good fortune to be in the right place at the right time in 2007 when the whole process of taking folks off the street, first into a tent camp, but then ultimately into the village uh, began. And, and it was an incredible, uh, uh, um, uh, incredible effort and an incredible experience. I'm not the Tim that, that, uh, that Mike spoke of, but <laughs> out in his, in his forest, but, but I, part of my interest is that there but for the grace of God go I or you or any one of us who might have suffered the problems that brought him to that point. I want to share two things with you uh, primarily. Um, one is the pride I have in, in Quixote Village. Um, that pride, as I, it comes about because, I, as I say, I was part of the whole thing. But it, become, it also comes about to be, to know that it's part of our community and part of what our community has done to step up to the, the problems that, are, that our most vulnerable neighbors all are dealing with. And, and Jeff just mentioned a, a few of those. But that's a pride I also currently share, and I'm very proud of that, with the city of Olympia who uh, at every, every turn uh, uses us as an as, as example of how it has stepped forward to deal with the array of issues that are having to do with homelessness. We're just one of, of a number of, of, of solutions, but Quixote Village has pro proved to be an extremely fortunate uh, or, or, or good model, and it's worked well for them. But the real folks who are most proud are the residents themselves. This is a, they're probably the first home they've had, the first door that they could close 
for a long time in their lives. They're chronically homeless folks who've been on the streets or in the woods for a long time. And when they come there, and they come there after being uh, uh, checked for background issues of, of outstanding warrants or, or uh, sexual predation that's not allowed, and they've come there with the agreement that what they want to be is clean and sober. And they value that so much, and the community that they create there with the help of uh, folks like Amanda, our staff, to get back on their feet, start growing instead of just reacting and, and, and avoiding, which is the, the way of life on the street. So it, it's an incredible environment for, for a set of people that, as I say, are among our most vulnerable. The other piece has to do with, with, with uh, uh, Tom started out by saying, we can't, we can't give you a lot of hard data about what it's going to look like. What we can say is that, like with Quixote Village, when, do, when it comes to time to, to design, that that design process involves not only Ponza, but the res the, the, hopefully the residents who will live there and the community. And so we hope to join in a partnership with you all to see to, to come up with a, a design that fits best with your understanding of what you want your community wants to be. Uh, and I'm hoping we'll have a chance to begin that with a conversation with you soon when we when you can ask us the questions you want. Thank you very much. Sorry for going a little long. Oh, no, thanks, Dan. Okay, thank everyone for their comments tonight. We'll move on to our next um, item of business, which is the consent agenda. Um, are we ready for the reading of the consent agenda? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Donna, could you please read? Vouchers number 18 through 18275 through 18271 in the amount of $432,063.64. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? We move to approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Okay, there's a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, first item on the business agenda, uh, communications economic development officer Andy Barnes is here to present a resolution having to do with the 2019 legislative agenda. Thank you. Mayor, members of the council, how are you guys doing? Doing good. How are you? Doing good. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a good day, so happy to be here. Uh, no, so what you have before you is just the proposed uh, 2019 legislative agenda. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, these are the items as we met in July, uh, July 13th and had our budget meeting um, and legislative priorities discussion. These are just those items that were refined and reflective of that discussion. Um, you'll notice it's divided into two sections. We have a potential capital uh, request, funding request, um, and then also the um, general policy issues. Um, just as a recap, those items were selected um, just based on project readiness, um, also their priority and available availability for potential uh, matching funds. Um, and then the general policy issues at this point, those are just a continuation of the policies that the city addressed during the 2018 um, session. So um, just if there's any other questions or discussion, unless there's that, I just would ask that you guys move this on to the action agenda for next meeting. I was uh, hoping that the workshop we talked about also something in front of the Oakland Bay Junior High where it's a, a three-way, they're coming out of school and coming down to right. Greenland Wallace where a, a kid or adult will step off the curb, one car will stop, the other car just keeps going, and kids are dodging cars there quite often. I sat and watched it, and I was hoping that that would be on here as well, as maybe as a... Right, I think, and as, as I recall, maybe you can help provide some clarification. I think that had to do with the broader conversation as far as like traffic signaling. I, I believe that's what we had, um, that was you, part of the discussion. Just the either a signal or a three-way stop or just something to right. stop those cars from, I mean, kids are dodging cars there, sure. and I think that is more important than yeah. placing a functional intersection with okay. the light, but it'd be nice to have on there. To, to and that's that certainly up to the council to decide that. So just again, these items are, are ones that have been, been vetted, you know, by city leadership, just saying, hey, these are ready. Um, for readiness and also matching funds, and that's something we could definitely look at our competitive funding source, or if that's something you want to put and actually put that as a priority to actually go after, you know, limited funds that are available in those budgets. So it totally up to you guys as far as what you want to focus on. So if you'd like us to add that, we can okay. definitely do that. What's the consensus group? Do you want to add that or leave leave it as? Well, I think it presented. 
I think it kind of falls under the infrastructure improvements on Wallace Neeland, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, just making sure that that's either bulleted as a point there and adequately covered. I don't think it needs to be a separate line item necessarily, but just kind of incorporated right. in that it's conversation. True, and as far as project development, that's certainly something that you could incorporate into that. I mean, that's obviously Craig's wheelhouse, but yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's part of that project, you could definitely. Maybe, yeah. go ahead. Well, I just, I do want to commend uh, Commissioner, Council Member Onisco for looking out into his community and seeing something that we probably just drive by, you know, and mm -hmm. I just uh, appreciate his input in taking the time to look at an area that we probably need to address. And so this is how we work together, and that uh, I would support the possibility of looking for funding for this also. So however we need to do it. Can, so. can we just ask staff to make sure that's documented as part of that, probably with Craig, as far as the... As far as for the project? Yeah, yeah as far absolutely. as that project. Yep. So again, so again, the purpose of these items, so just to give you an idea of what will happen with this, so this resolution, once this is formalized, this then just authorizes us to move forward with submitting actual individual appropriations requests to members of the 35th Legislative District. And what they do, they then consider whether which ones, you know, considering the political climate, et cetera, et cetera, availability of funding in that, um, then whether they will sponsor those and put those forward to for consideration. So that's what this allows us to do is by formalizing these items, we'll then go through and make those appropriation requests and submit those. They're called LCP forms. Um, and requests that we'll make. So that, so again, going, if there are uh, items that, yeah, like, like you mentioned, Eric, that could fit into a project, we could certainly incorporate that into that. You're good with that, yeah. Councilman. Okay, all right, thanks, Can Andy. Can I say something? Yes, you may. <laughs> I love the Shelton Civic Center parking lot paving project. <laughs> Perfect. I am going to be the first one to play basketball on that court when it's done. <laughs> Well, you have to talk I will. Mark, so you get the, I, I may not get the ready. ball in the basket, but you know what? I'll be down there. <laughs> awesome. So, so Andy, yeah. um, thanks. You, you basically answered my question. I was just more or less getting into the process behind this. And is there? A, and just ask the council at this point. Do you think there's another need for us to talk a little bit more about this before we move? I know he wants to move to action on this, but is there something that you guys want to discuss maybe any further? Because we've only kind of touched it once. Well, no, for, for next week. I just meant for night. We don't have to do it tonight. I just meant for Yeah. Week. No, no, I know. Yeah, Close I just didn't know between now and then if there's a need to, like, better formalize your your language or in what you're looking for or any other <coughs> pieces or parts of this you guys want to review or? I'm not hearing much. All right. I think if anything should come up, that that's something um, we can bring to staff during briefings that we have a chance cool. to review it prior to the next yeah. council And I will also meeting. say this, this certainly, and, and, and to kind of go further, just to give you an idea on the process and what this helps us do as well, is we'll also be holding, like we did last year, we did a legislative preview with our, our state delegation. So once this is formalized, we'll obviously set that up and invite you guys to attend that as well, the council. Um, and what that is, just a, it gives us a, a baseline to start from. And this is certainly not etched in stone and limits us to anything as far as, as the, you know, we progress through the session. Um, we certainly can, you know, adapt whether that be, you know, to certain um, appropriation requests as they, you know, become relevant or policy issues as well. I would also add that um, as we move forward in this process, it would be my hope that we could reach out to the other entities and agencies right. in the area. And I would imagine there are probably some projects that all of us can agree need to rise to the top um, of priorities. And if we can find that common ground, I would really encourage staff and um, leadership at the council level to open those conversations because I, I can't imagine the stress that our legislators are under to divide these funds and if we can find a way to move together in a cohesive manner, all the better. So I appreciate opening that conversation and would hope that we could continue to explore that as we move forward. No, absolutely. I think that gives us a good baseline to do that. So, and also just a, just I wanted to bring this up for the uh, policy issues. If there are anything between now and next week, I mean that you, you know you feel that need to be added to that for um, that are reflective of things that you're concerned about. Again, this is just uh, completely um, the same as what we did last year, essentially. Um, so, if there are adjustments that you'd like to make, I mean these are and they're intentionally worded very broadly, right? And so, just to give you an idea, I mean the, the appropriation requests are one thing. Uh, policy issues, kind of how that works, and working with Troy, you know, we, we kind of respond to those as bills come up, whether those potentially have, you know, negative or positive impacts on the city or policy issues that we're concerned about, you know, we can then respond accordingly. Um, so that's giving us what those are, just gives us a framework to, to then respond to those. So. Good. Okay. So I'll ask for the first reading resolution. And if we only have one reading of a resolution, we can certainly take it at the next meeting when uh, you take action on it, final action. Okay. Just consent to move it to the action agenda. All right, so is there consent to move it to the action agenda for the 21st? 
-hmm. Okay, yes. so we'll move it forward to the 21st. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Andy. Okay, next, uh, Community Development Mark Ziegler is going to talk about our Civic Center Rotating Art Gallery. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, once again, I bring to you the recommendations from the uh, City of Shelton Arts Commission for placement of art in the Rotating Art Gallery. Uh, a call for artists was placed uh, with the deadline of July 27th. Four artists submitted their work uh, to the Arts Commission for a jury on the 31st of July. I'm bringing to you the recommendation of three artists, a uh, total of nine pieces, and I believe you have in your packets um, photos of those pieces of art uh, for placement and with your approval on the, to place this on the action agenda. Let's see, for the 21st, right? Of, right. Um, of August, um, we would have the work up by September 4th and on display for three months and then uh, start this process again. Okay. This is the neatest, I say this every time, Mark, when you bring that artwork to us, but on the displays are getting a little bit smaller. You know, we used to get bigger pictures. Oh, in your packet? Anyway, yeah. um, this is the best idea. It's just the greatest idea for that wall. People, there are tons of people that just look at that. It's great. <clears throat> Thank you, I'll pass that on now. Uh, yep, we have good. a recreation coordinator who's handling uh, the Arts Commission now, and oh. it, it's not me on a regular basis, so um, Let her know. These, these are new to me as well, and I appreciate the work that Jordan is putting in. I yes, will pass that on. Doing uh, a great job. Your thoughts. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Um, I assume everyone's good with moving this forward to the next meeting? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, our first action item is with Mark again uh, on information about the grant for repairs to the William G. Reed Library. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, today I'm bringing you the grant from the Department of Commerce um, for the direct appropriation for repairs at William G. Reed Library. As you'll remember, back in May, on May 29th, we approved a contract with um, Len Williams, Foster Williams Architects, to um, perform the architectural work for this uh, project. Um, we had a little bit of delay uh, and we were waiting for some comments back from uh, the local tribes and some other entities um, before we could get the actual contract back from the Department of Commerce. Uh, we have that in your hands today and uh, I would appreciate that um, uh, an authorization for the mayor to sign so we can get this back to uh, Commerce and get this project underway in earnest. Okay. Any public comment? Uh, no all right. Comment. Questions, comments from the council for Mark? Let's get to work. Uh, <laughs> question, any feedback from on the actual repair estimate yet? They are, they're working on it. Um, I received an email from Mr. Williams last week. They had done their um, preliminary investigation, so they're working on some de design work now. I think there were some vacations in their office, okay. and so uh, they should be back this week working on that, and we'll be in contact soon. And, hopefully bringing forward some uh, some more information to you shortly. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have a motion on this item? I move to accept the Department of Commerce grant by authorizing the mayor to sign. Second. Okay, we have a motion to accept the Department of Commerce grant. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes, thank you. And we've gotten rid of Chief Moody's Oh. old cars. So I guess we're on to Interim City Manager Vicki Look for our manager's Good report. Part. Well, we've been very busy with um, looking at applications that came in for the positions that we have open for the Assistant City Manager, the City Clerk, and the HR Director. So we're going through those and probably a little later this week we will be calling and setting up interviews for uh, toward the end of August and we will be going through those processes. So that's keeping us pretty busy with the internal operations of the city. So that's what uh, we've been doing. We have a couple of staff on vacation, so that's why Craig's not here right now to talk to us about some of his projects. Okay. So. Any questions for Manager Luck? No. Nope. Okay, All thank right. you. Um, we're at the end of our agenda, so we are a Adjourned. As they do that, it's too early. <laughs> At the same time, we would have been uh, started. Opening. Starting last time. That's right. <laughs>